All right, hello. They told me I need a mic, so I'm using the mic today. Um, this is, um, I think we're on session five, breakout session five. Um, and this is UDOT's Interchange. And so I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Carrie Ann Noble, and I am the administrator of Interchange, uh, which if you don't know what it is, you're going to learn today. So it says, this session will introduce UDOT Interchange. We will focus on the overall environment, introducing the home page and the team sites. Users who want more specific training are advised to attend the Interchange course specific to that area. So there are two other um, courses available on Interchange later. There's one specific for pre-construction and there's one specific for construction. So check your schedules if this isn't what you're looking for. But this Interchange that we're talking about is actually um, available to everybody in UDOT. So you guys are probably wondering what is UDOT Interchange? Probably heard it. What is it? How does it help me? Well, basically, it is designed to be a gateway to your work. So we built it on a SharePoint platform. And um, it is, it's got a lot of different functionality. So you're going to learn a little bit about it today. I'm not going to go into too much depth on any of the parts. Um, but we are very willing to come do a demo for you or get, help you get set up or do training. So we have uh, Interchange is an overall site that contains a lot of other things. So we have a home page which has news announcements, the social media feeds um, from Twitter and Facebook, from UDOT. Um, there's links out there. Um, so that's what's on the home page. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming on the home page as well. Um, we've got Matt Altred, who is in charge of internal UDOT communication, and he's going to be really spearheading that and getting a lot of useful information out there. Um, we have construction project sites. So if any of you have used an interchange site for construction, you might recognize that. Um, we now have pre-construction sites. These are fairly new. So all of that stuff is available there. Uh, PMO, if you've used Project Management Office, that's on Interchange. We also have non-PIN project sites, so if you're doing a project that doesn't have to do with a PIN, a UDOT PIN, you can um, create a site for it and manage your project on the site. Um, we have team sites, which helps you collaborate with your team. And we have something we call My Sites, which is information that's specific to you. And then we have also tools. Um, MOI, we have a roadway MOI right now, and there's others that are going to be coming. There's a lot of forms that are out there, and there's going to be more to come. Um, we have the, the TOC camera feeds. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff out there. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of some of these things. Now, notice this tools. I, I know you can't see it very well up here on the header, but this is the menu system for interchange, and that last one right there is tools. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be on this drop down. And right now, it's not all where it's supposed to be, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So let's start with the home page. So this is what it looks like right now. This is the, the main story, the UDOT conference, of course, because that's what's going on in UDOT. And um, this is a, a picture and an article that uh, Matt Allred posted up for us. Um, the, currently, I think we have four different news sites or news stories that are rotating through on that. Um, but that'll be a place where you can go and see, you know, what's going on in UDOT? What are the main news stories? What's the blog? Whatever is, is next. And then right below that, um, I wish I could show you like the whole homepage and just scroll through. But uh, right below that, we have this section, which these are all different tabs in the same section. So this is the announcements, and you'll see things that look familiar here. Like, uh, here's the 2015 statewide UDOT award nominees. These are basically things that come out in UDOT-wide emails. They get posted up here in the announcements. We got the construction competition, um, date correction, annual conference reminder. And then this is the Twitter feed for the UDOT Twitter accounts. So all of these things are rolling up into, into here. So if you wonder what they're saying on Twitter and you don't actually want to go out to Twitter, there's a good place you can look at it. And then over here we have the, the Facebook feed. So you can scroll through their Facebook posts um, for UDOT and see what's going on on Facebook. And then off to the other side, just to the other side of this on the homepage layout, we've got a section that gives us a lot of links. Now. 
We're going to get into some of these things later on, um, like my projects and team sites. But you'll see, if you're a member of a team site or a project site, then these are going to show up as links right here. So you'll be able to get to anything that you're a member of. It looks like this is from my, my own page. And so I'm like the administrator of everything. So I have a lot of stuff on there. I have to scroll through a lot. But most of you guys won't have the hundreds that I do. Um, but you can see here's all the, a bunch of team sites that I am on. Over here in the middle, we've got something called quick links. Um, and these are links that you can add. And they can be internal. They can be external. You can see I've got EPM, Penguin Cam, um, I-15 Core, uh, some management stuff, Central Admin. So I've got a bunch of stuff that I've added that's specific to me. Now, the nice thing about this quick links, you see if I've done this little pop out right here, up there in the top corner, that's the header of the site. So every time you're on that site, that quick links button is going to be there no matter where you are. So you can get to your links, whichever ones you've added, from anywhere in Interchange. Um, and then over here, we've got project sites, um, the, the projects that I'm a member of that I've added. So um, those are some fun things. There's a lot more coming, and I wanted to put a lot more out there. Um, but some of it's just kind of up in the air as to what we're going to do with it yet. But those are the main things that are out there that will be um, valuable to you coming up. We're going to have a lot of, a lot of stuff going on on the, on the home page. But let's move on to team sites. I'm trying to keep my eye on the clock so you guys can get to lunch. <laughs> um, now, you might be thinking, why would I want to do this? So how can a site help my team? Well... Um, we've got team task assignment and tracking, so you can assign tasks to whoever's on your team as a member of the site, and they get their own personal task list. And um, then we've got document collaboration, so you can have a document library just for storing documents related to your team. We've got a meeting minutes app, so if you have team meetings, you can keep track of all the meetings right in there. Um, you can actually assign tasks directly from the meeting minutes. Uh, that will go on to people's uh, tasks, li tasks lists. Sorry, that's hard to say. Then you've got calendars, um, news feeds, and discussion boards. And this is all customizable. So the nice thing about um, the team sites is we can mix and match all these parts so that your team gets to see on that landing page what they need. All these parts are still available. But the things that you use most should be what's on that landing page. Um, let's go on and I'll show you a few of the things. So here's some of the parts. I didn't want to show you just, well, I've got one example of a team site, but I wanted to show you the parts because the parts can be mixed and matched. So right here, this is your menu, and this is always going to show up kind of on this side. It's got your home, home of your team, the home page layout, and then you've got your documents, your tasks, your meeting minutes, and then you can add anything else that you want to that. So if you have other links that you want to put that are appropriate for your team, slap them in there. That's what you get um, just right out of the box. Here's a big long task list. So this is one of the team tasks lists that somebody has created and put up there on their home page of their team site. So their team can get a list and see what kind of tasks are going on. Over here, we've got the document library. So you can, if your documents are the most important thing for your team, you can put that on your home page. Um, we've got some announcements. You might use announcements a lot on your home page. Maybe that's what's important to your team. And then over here on this side, you've got a calendar uh, that will show upcoming events. So you can see this is just kind of a nice little layout with a couple little features down here that shows, OK, UDOT conference obviously coming up. And then Halloween, because Halloween's fun, right? And here's some more things that you can actually add. So if your team is working on a lot of projects, you can add projects, the projects that your team's associated with, onto this, the home page layout. This is going to show who's on your team. So it can be two people. It can be 57 people. You can have as many people as you want. And as the administrator of your site, you get to choose. And then over here, this is an example of a news feed. Um, and this was. You know, this is really handy, so if there's things that your team needs to know about, but you don't want to send it out in an email, you want it to be available to everybody that's on the team, but oh, I don't want to copy everybody, I don't want it passed around, I don't want to get 5,000 replies from different people, you can put it out here. It looks a little bit like Facebook. 
people can reply to it. Um, and that way you keep the information related to your team on your team site. Okay, so this is an example of one of the layouts. And actually, so this is one that I use all the time. And after I did this screenshot, I actually swapped this part out because I was like, well, we don't use this as much. We use something else. And so I swapped this part out and I put something different up there that would be more relevant to my team. But you can see over here, this is the, the menu list. And I've added a lot of different things on here. These sites are really customizable. And you get to choose what parts you want to use. So that's, that's one of the great things. The team members show up down here on this site. And then in the middle, you can see we've got team tasks. And then I've got a news feed down here and the calendar with upcoming events. So those are the things that our team, this team, chose to see on their landing page. And there's lots of different options. Any one of those options on those prior slides, you can swap in there. All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about project sites. And we have several different project sites in Interchange. The one I'm going to specifically talk about today is um, a, what we call a non-PIN project site. And that's what it shows up when you request a project. Um, because most of our projects, when we think of projects at UDOT, we think of engineering projects, road construction projects, all those things that get assigned a PIN number. And, um, but there's a lot of projects that we do that don't necessarily get assigned a PIN. So what can we use a project site for? A uh, project is assigned to a team that is larger than a few tasks with a beginning and an end date. So if I'm considering, is this a project or just a few tasks? Well, how big is it? Is it going to take a long time? How am I going to manage it? Do I have a lot of people that are going to be involved? That's one of the things you want to consider, because some of it can be assigned or can be managed just using tasks. Um, you get the project task assignment and tracking. This has a simple project timeline and a Gantt chart view. Um, there's document collaboration and storage for any documents related to your project. Um, there's also the meeting minutes app. And there's a simple budget tracking part. So if you have a, if you have a budget that you want to track, you can do that. So this is an example, and you can see it's, it's kind of familiar. It kind of looks a little bit like the team site, where we've got our menu over here and our project members over here. But in the middle right here, I've got kind of a timeline. And you can see some of my tasks showing up on this timeline. And then when I'm logged in, it's going to show me my tasks. So these are the tasks that are assigned to me. Um, on the team site, it shows all the team tasks, but this one's mine. And then over here, we've got project documents. So anything that's been uploaded just kind of gives you a quick overview of what the project looks like. And here's a couple other. This is the task management um, view. And this is one view. You can customize this view and add anything that helps you sort or track your tasks. So for example, this task type field over here, I don't really have anything in there on this site. But if I want to track tasks that have to do with documentation, tasks that have to do with um, construction, tasks that have to do with correspondence. I can go in and I can assign those and choose whatever I want. And then I can filter and sort by those to make it easy for me to find what I'm looking for. Um, over here, this is kind of, this is the same task list, but it's shown as a Gantt chart view. So if you're into project management and you kind of like that view, you can get that. That's just right out of the box available. Just have to switch the view. Um, this is a document library. So this is kind of what it looks like here. And um, you notice I've got this box popped up. If you have an Office document, like a Microsoft Office, Word, or Excel, or PowerPoint, you'll get this nice little preview, or a picture. It'll show a picture, too. You get this nice little preview that pops up um, that shows you what document it is. So if you can't remember what you named it, you can just kind of click there and see the preview before you open the whole document. And um, you can see right here it says shared with. This is by default going to be anybody that's on your team, but you can share with people that aren't on your team as well, and they'll be able to look at that document. Um, with the documents, of course, you can see across the top here, you can do kind of the same thing where you can add information for your documents and sort and filter by whatever you want. 
this is a little bit of a look. This is very brief. Like I said, there's a lot here, and so I'm just trying to kind of run through all of it. This is the meeting minutes application. So one thing that's nice about the meeting minutes, if you have recurring meetings, you can save a template and um, have all those these uh, discussion items here available and then just add things in as you go. You can assign tasks directly from the meeting. Um, you can attach, you can print them, you can archive the meeting minutes into ProjectWise. Um, so if you want to put your meeting minutes into ProjectWise, you can. So there's a lot of options. There's a bunch of different formatting that you can use. You can do bullet points and all that stuff. So. And those stay directly on the site. And whoever the meeting attendees are, um, when you set up the meeting, those are the people that can see it. So if you don't add somebody to a meeting, they can't see that it's there. So they won't even know what happened. Um, the two people, there's only two people that can um, edit the meeting minutes, and that is the organizer and the the minutes by person. So there's two fields in there that you fill out and you assign somebody to that. Um, let me talk really quick about my site. Now this is something that I think a lot of people have been really interested in. My sites are specific to you. So this is your stuff. Okay, this is where you find your stuff. So some of the things on my sites, what can I do? What can I do with my my site? Well, I've got a task list roll up from all my team sites and all my project sites. So if I've got, you know, you can see I had a whole bunch of project sites and a whole bunch of team sites and I was assigned on a bunch of them. All of my tasks from all of those sites are rolling up to my site. So I can take a look at those and say, oh, this is all the stuff I have to do. I don't have to sort through everybody else's stuff to see what I'm working on. You also have a personal task list. So if you want to add anything in, you can create your own personal task that's just on your my site, just for you. Go get milk after work. That's a good example. Um, links to all your teams and project sites. So we've got those links up there, so it's easy for you to get to. You get to set up a personal profile for yourself. Um, you can change your picture. You can put all sorts of information in there. It automatically pulls over from uh, Active Directory. Some of your Google information will pull in there. But it gets saved here um, in Interchange, and you can change that. So whoever's looking at your profile in Interchange sees what you want them to see. We have links to common forms. Um, again, I've got the little star by it. That's going to be moving. We're going to have a big forms library for a whole bunch of stuff, because everybody uses different stuff, right? Um, same with the permit and project information. So if you're out uh, looking at um, some permits, you want to see what permits are in this area. I'll show an example. This is kind of hard to explain unless you see it, but I'm guessing once you see it, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, TOC cameras and the signs with filtering. You can go check out all the signs in your area and the cameras and say, hey, what's going on on this route? Um, document submittal workflow status from any project site. So if you have a document submittal, that you're a part of, that'll show you where it is, where you are in the, in the steps. And then you have your own personal document library that you can put your own files in. So this is, um, this is the layout initially of, of my site. So uh, over here I see kind of my same thing, my menu. And down here, this is a list of my teams, and below it, you can't see on this view, is a list of my projects. But these are collapsible. See this arrow right here? So that'll collapse up if I don't want to see the whole list, if I just want to see that um, there. And then you'll see this is my task list. So here's all the different projects that my tasks are coming from. And if I click over here and I expand, um, you can see the tasks listed individually. You can see when they're due. Um, this one's 14 days overdue, so I guess I'm behind. And then um, you can see which ones I have to do. This one's due today. Oh, I'm still OK on that one. Um, where they came from, so what site they came from, who assigned it. This one was assigned by myself, so I assigned myself a task. And then this little star over here, if I put a star by this, if I click this, I can, it will show up over here on this tab, which is priority tasks. So that shortens my list a little bit. I can take a look at it and say, OK, these are the things I want to work on today. These are my 
most overdue or my most pressing items. So I'm going to, you know, filter all that over just to this tab. And you notice up here, I don't have any PMO tasks, but if any of you guys are using PMO, you can see save all PMO changes. If you have PMO tasks, you can make your status updates right here in your My Site without having to log into PMO. This is a big mess. I'm sorry, this slide is a big mess. But these are all the things in your profile that you can change. So you can see um, it has my phone number and my email address and my title and where I work. And then down here it says, ask me about. So these are just kind of some fun things. It's like, what if somebody's looking for some help with something, who would I ask? And I can search. And anybody that has that in their tag, if you searched interchange, then it might come up with my name because I said, ask me about interchange. I know a little bit about this. So this can help you find um, in a search somebody that, that can help you with something. I can change my picture here. I've got this little section. I don't have anything in it right now about me. When you put something in about me, when people click on your profile, it'll show that little thing. So you can say something about your, your job, what your job title is, or what, what you like to do on the weekends. I don't know, something, whatever, whatever describes you, whatever you feel is, is descriptive of you. Over here, I've got some more information, my mobile phone, fax, because, you know, we all still have faxes, right? Um, my home phone, if I want to put that in, notice that's blank. <laughs> Sorry. Um, my agency location, I put fourth floor, because that's where I sit at the complex, is on the fourth floor. You can put whatever you want in there. And over here, I've got some information about projects and stuff that I've worked on, past projects, skills, schools. I got my birthday I can put in there. Um, and by the way, it only takes your birthday, not the date. So if you don't want anybody to know how old you are, it won't show that. Um, I've got interests. I can put interests out there. So hey, if there's anybody that likes Irish dance, look me up. Maybe that's in my interests. Cool. Um, and down here, we have a little area called custom properties. And this has unit, unit number, and region or group. So if you fill that information out, then people will eventually be able to filter you and say, OK, this, is, this person's in region four. This person works at the complex. This person works in, works in project management. And we'll be able to use that on the home page to specify information to you when you log in. So you'll ha we'll have the ability to say, OK, check this field, see where this person works. Oh, they're in region four. Let's show them the region four stories. Awesome. You can still see the other ones, too, but you're probably more concerned about what's going on in your own region, right? So that's just some of the information. If you go out there and look at it, there's a ton. And just for the record, anybody that has um, an Active Directory account, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, has a My Site. You all have one available, so this is already out there for you. This is kind of, okay, so this is our, um, this is our forums right here. We have a list of forms, and we don't have all of them out here yet. We know there's a lot that we're missing, so we're working on that. This is eventually going to be moved under that tools menu. There'll be a big section for forms, and you'll be able to search and find the ones that you want that are pertinent to you. Um, the reason this stuff is moving is because we kind of looked at it after we got it done. We're like, you know, this is more for everybody. This isn't specific to me, so I don't need it on my site. Um, but it is very useful. And then over here, we have our um, permits and projects. So I have, I can filter up here. I've got a bunch of filters, and we're working on putting more filters out there. But I've got pin and start date and name and route, permit or project, whether it's a permit or project, the status of it. And I actually can't read what that says. I think it says project delivery. Yes, that's what it says. So those are all things that I can filter this list by. And I can get information about any permits going on on a certain route or, or projects that are going on, if I can find out where a certain PIN number is happening, find out if there's any active permits that I need to be concerned about. There's a lot of data out there, and we're, that's why we're working on getting some additional filters, because when we dumped it, we were like, oh, wow, there's like 3,000 records out there. So the more you can filter, the easier it'll be to find what you're looking for. But that's some good information that was requested. And then we have the cameras. So these are the TSC cameras. You guys recognize these? When you log on, you can see all the different cameras. And um, we've got these so you can filter it by route. 
region or mileposts. Um, we're working with GIS to get some more filters built into this as well. So we hope eventually to be able to, um, we've got right here where it says view stations. This is still a little bit broad. We're still working on narrowing it down and that's why we're working with GIS to get some of their information drawn into here. And then you can see the signs. So if you want to, we've got um, little drop downs of the sign areas. You can see if there's any messages on any of the signs that you have going on in your area. All right, and the last thing I'm going to show you, I think this is the last thing I'm going to show you about my sites. I'm trying to get done here. Sorry, I'm talking really fast. Hopefully everybody's still awake. You guys all still awake? Okay, good. If you have any questions, I'll get questions in just a minute. But, or you can interrupt me, too. If you have a question you want to interrupt me, that's fine, too. Um, this is, um, if you're using document workflows on your project sites, um, this is what this is. And this is really handy if you are like, well, I know I'm supposed to review a document, but I don't know where I am in the workflow. If you've been assigned to review a document or a document has to go through you in a workflow, you'll, you'll get this tab right here. It says, my document approvals. Here's, here's a couple that I have. This one has two steps in it. Um, this one's past due. See, it's red up here. And this one is due November 30th. You can see. This is the one, this is where it is, so the blue one is active. So this person has it first, and then here's me. I'm the dark black square right here, so I'm second in this one. And then there's one more person after me, and it shows me the due dates that have been assigned to each person, so I know how long I have, or if it's past, you know, if it's getting close to my due date, I can say, well, who has it? What's their due date? How close am I? And there's also a tab over here. Um, for any documents that you've submitted. So if you've submitted documents through the document submittal processes, you can check and see where those documents are. And it looks just like this, so I didn't do an additional screenshot, but it's kind of handy. You're like, okay, I submitted that document. I want to know who has it. Whose desk is it sitting on right now? Oh, sorry, I've got one more. So this is my personal document library, which is really nice. That's just where I dump all my documents. You can see up here, these are all my presentations right here. And I've got this box popped up. Because I've added, I told you it was customizable, I've added a document category. So I want to say, I don't want to click through seven different folders to get what I want. I want to just look at my library and be like, OK. I want to see all my presentations. So I gave it a label. And I've got documentation, pictures, presentation, Red tape, sorry, there's some red tape documents out there. And some training certificates out there. So if I want to find all my presentations, I just check that box. And it will narrow it down and just show things that I've labeled as a presentation. If I'm trying to find documentation, I just check the documentation box. And it'll find anything that I've labeled as that. I don't have to click into you know, a folder seven layers deep to try and find it and then realize that folder's empty and try and go back up the line and figure out where I put it. Super easy. Um, the other thing I want to point out, see this little lock right here? By default, you are the only person who has access to your My Site. So I forgot to say this when I was showing you guys the tasks. If you assign someone a task from your My Site, they won't be able to interact with it unless you give them permissions to do so on your site. So if you're going to assign somebody else a task, it's best to do it in a team site or a project site. Otherwise, they're just going to have this task sitting out on their list forever that they're not going to be able to do anything with, and they're going to be really annoyed at you. Um, but this, this is a little lock. And you can see right here, this one has a couple people, little little double people icon. This one, this means I've shared it with somebody. So I can right click on these, well, on these little, well, click on these little ellipses. There's a couple ways to do it. And I can pop up that menu, and I can share it with people. And they can just go in. They'll send them a link, and they'll say, hey, here's a link to my document. That's all they have access to. I can either give them edit rights or read-only rights. And that way, I don't have to email it to them. I don't have to think there might be another copy of it floating around somewhere. This is where my document stays. And then when they're done looking at it, I can just take away the share. I don't have to share it with them anymore, and they won't be able to get to it 
So that's kind of a nice way to keep track of your own documents, even if you want people to look at them. All right, so real quick, how do I get access to Interchange? Well, um, you go to interchange.u.utah.gov and log in using your Active Directory account. If you're a UDOT employee, you already have one. It's the name and password that you use to log into your computer. If you are off-site, um, you need to put Utah backslash and then your username to make sure that you get into the correct domain and then your password's the same. Consultants or contractors, some of you guys already have Active Directory accounts if you're using PMO or any other, possibly project-wise has them as well. Um, but you can request one through DTS. And if you're interested in doing that, I have um, some handouts here. You can come and get one that has all the instructions on how to get an Active Directory account set up. Or um, you can email me and I will send you an electronic copy. Um, everybody who, has, who can log in has in access to the Interchange homepage and to my sites. And then you can request a new team or project site or be added to an existing one. So you can create your own sites. Um, if you need help, you can always give me a call. Um, let me take any questions now. Does anybody have any questions about any of this stuff? No? Yeah. That is not something I'm sure I can answer. This is just a tool right now. Um, we're offering it to you guys. If it's something that's helpful for you, then by all means use it. If you think you can take it and customize it and make it really useful or do something different with it or use it as it is, great. It's available to everybody. I'm not 100% sure what's coming down the line in the future, whether they're going to require it. Um, I know that they've talked in construction and pre-construction about possibly putting a special provision into a contract if they want to use this. So that's where you would find out. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it does. It, it links up with ProjectWise. So anytime you have a, a task assigned to you, or I guess, what's it called in ProjectWise? Help me. Yeah, an activity. Is that what it is? Oh, project-wise, sorry, project-wise. I'm sorry, I'm thinking PMO. Um, attributes, yes. So in the construction, in the pre-construction sites, there's a document submittal process where you can assign those attributes when you upload the document. And then at the end of your project or whatever you're doing, you can move those over to project-wise. Currently, they're not in the team sites or in the um, non-PIN project sites. However, it's possible that we could in the future go that direction if we wanted to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can. We have Cosign. There's a little, have you seen Cosign? There's a little booth. I know they have a booth out there. Um, it is available when we turn it on. So that's, that would be something that you would request if you want to do electronic signatures. Um, but Cosign is actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cosign right now just because it's really cool. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a signature application. You don't have to have an additional little drive or anything like that. Uh, it uses your Active Directory name and password to sign off. You just need to get it set up. And then um, once it's set up, you can sign anything that is in this environment, in the interchange environment. So there are some, there are actually some apps that we're building here right now that will allow you to go in and use Cosign to electronically sign a form and things like that. So yeah, that is available. Any other questions? Right now, it's a lot of it's still fairly new. I think the construction projects have been around for about a year, so the project sites. Um, we actually, this is kind of funny, we actually have more consultants using it than UDOT people. So uh, for the construction project sites, pre-construction is brand new as of January. So not as many, wait, no, no, not January, June. So not as many people are using those. We've got a couple of sites set up, I think in region four that are using it. Um, team sites are being used um, spread around the different regions. 
um, and within the complex. So there's quite a few. It's not super widespread yet, um, but there's a lot of really useful things out there. So we want to make sure people are aware that it's out there and available to them. And it's free. We don't charge you. We just make you get an Active Directory account. So that's it. <coughs> Absolutely, yeah. There are a lot of um, plans. We, we've kind of, it's really, you guys can kind of see it's a big scope, right? Um, so the one, we started off with construction, honestly, because that's where we got the money from. So <laughs> anytime we can get money, we'll take on the project. So if you say, hey, we'd like this, all right, great, give us the money. We'll give you the, the product. We've got a, a really um, great group of developers working with us, our consultants, ITG, Kyle's here. Thank you, Kyle. So they've been really great in giving us whatever we ask for. So yeah. Yeah. Um, DTS backs it up for us. So they're on virtual servers that are at the Capitol. We do um, ourselves some a different type of backup so that we can restore granularly. So if you lose a document or something, we can go back in and granularly restore that. Um, but the rest of it gets backed up, you know, full, fully at the at the capital. So we can restore if anything happens. Um, and then, what was the second part? Sorry. Oh, as of right now, there's not. So as we grow, um, we'll, the, it'll probably just depend on how fast we can add the servers to store stuff. So as of right now, there's no limit. Anybody else? You guys all just ready for lunch? <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, at the point, yes, um, they're, they're actually a really good example. So the point, um, they're using it quite extensively on their project. They had used um, they had used SharePoint previously. This is a SharePoint-based application, and they had used that previously um, at the core. It was one of the things that they said made them very successful. So when we decided to develop this, um, the point project was one of the projects that gave us some money to help develop this. And uh, we took that construction, the construction layout site, and we we're like, here you go. Here's your site. Go do whatever you want with it. And they've customized it. They've done all kinds of stuff that they're, you know, they've got, they're using some of our stuff and some of the stuff that they developed themselves. Basically, we gave them the site and said, here, go for it. And they, they did. So um, it's been really great. They're using it. Um, very extensively. In fact, if it goes down, they're usually the first ones that call us and tell us about it. So <laughs> we know there's people in there all the time. Anyone else? No? All right. Well, thank you for coming. Um, I got you out pretty quick. You got 15 minutes. Go get a good seat for lunch, right? Um, and if you have any questions, here, let me put my information up here. Um, if you want to schedule a live demo or training, we're more than happy to come to your location and do that for you. Um, this is my information right here. I've got business cards up here if you want. Um, there's an interchange support email address, and or you can contact Ivan Hartle. Thank you. <laughs>